Patrick here from Specifics Prep. Today we're gonna to talk about functions. Uh, a lot of times students feel sort of scared by function questions because they are, again, uh, similar enough to what they see in school that they you know, begin to feel comfortable, but uh, there's, there's just a small enough twist that uh, you know, you start to feel out of your element and, and really, really confused. Uh, so we're going to talk about big picture, what functions are, and um, again, big picture, how you can start to categorize function questions into to sort of different, um, you know, techniques and uh, uh, approaches. Because there are really only a few different ways they can test functions. I'm going to show you a few examples of those today. Uh, big picture, though. A function is simply a way of turning an input into an output. That's all it is. A uh, very, very simple example. Probably the first function in history was a farmer said, you know what, for every, uh, you know, 50 seeds that I plant, I get enough food for three weeks, right? Uh, that's 50 to three. And I said, well, if I double that, I don't quite get three, maybe I get, you know, um, seven, uh, right? Like I don't get quite a double, I get a little bit more. Uh, so that's a function, right? That is, it turns an input into an output and that's all a function is. Uh, so it's really important to realize that there are only three things they can really ask you about on function questions. They can ask you about the number that goes in, they can ask you about the number that comes out, or they can ask you about the function itself. Uh, and they'll generally give you two of those three things and just ask you about the third. Um, so we'll see examples of a few of those in a second. But just wanted to preface the whole discussion by saying there are only three things you really need to worry about. The function questions. Uh, the input, the output, and the function itself. Okay, so the rest is just, you know, notation. Um, so let's take a look at a few examples. Okay, so we're going to start with a uh, basic function question. This is number 11. But remember, grid and start on 9, so this is the equivalent of a number 3. And this one says, if f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 5, what is the value of f of 4? And the majority of students who, who see this question feel very comfortable with it because they're basically saying, here is the function right here. And you know, I want to know what the value of the function would be uh, if you put in a 4. So this is an example of them sort of, uh, again, if you look at the process, we have the input with the function and with the output. Uh, they're giving you the function, right? And they're giving you the input. So this is a very common scenario. They're giving you the input, they're giving you the function, they wanna know the output, right? So uh, this is easy, right? We just take this four and we just plug it in wherever we see an x, right? We're replacing the x with a four. So it'd be four squared plus three times four plus five, right? Nothing too revolutionary there. So 16 plus 12 plus five, uh, 17 plus 16 is 33, right? Okay, just put in 33 here, bubble in, and we earn 10 points. Not a problem. And like I said, this is very similar to what students are used to seeing, so this shouldn't feel too unusual. The next question, however, starts to mess around with that idea. Uh, so let's look at number 14. Again, this is 14, but starting on nine. So this is medium, uh, sort of on the cusp of being a difficult question. And it says the function P can be used to predict the population in millions of bacteria in a cultural dish after uh, T minutes, right? Um, after, if P of T equals negative X squared uh, plus 10 X plus seven, how many, after how many minutes will the population be seven million bacteria? Okay. so. What are they giving you here? Again, if we have this visual representation, we have x, we have the function, and then we have f of x, that is the output, uh, also known as y. Um, which components are they giving you here? Obviously, they give you the function, right? So they're giving you the, uh, you know, they're giving you the middle component. And they're also saying, after how many minutes will the population be seven million bacteria? Well, they say that the function is used to predict the population, right? So they're actually giving you, when they say 7 million bacteria, they're actually giving you the output, right? So in this case, um, they're giving you the function and the output and asking you to find the input, right? In the previous one, we saw that they were giving you the input and the function and asking for the output. So there's a huge difference in that. Uh, sort of throws a lot of students for a loop. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do those, and it's really not that bad. If you give, If they give you the output in the function, just set the function equal to the output and solve for the variable. All right, it's really simple. So here it says it's in millions and I'm looking for seven million. So we're gonna set this entire function equal to seven, right? So seven equals negative x squared plus 10 x plus seven, right? And that's not terribly difficult. Uh, so the first thing is we're gonna simplify so we can bring this seven over, the sevens drop out, right? So we have zero equals negative 
x squared plus 10x. Um, let's bring this 10x over. So a negative 10x equals negative x squared. And you see why I did that. You can get rid of these um, negative signs. And then we can divide both sides by x, right? So we get 10 equals x. And that's our answer, right? That's that's all there is to it. Uh, and that's that's the answer. We're done. So when they give you the function and the output, just set the function equal to the output. Those are the two most common scenarios. Um, in later videos, we're going to see different formats in which they can test these concepts, that is by throwing in some graphs or maybe some weird symbols. Uh, but these are the two big ideas you need to walk away with. Uh, the first one, again, is they give you the function and they give you the input. Just put the input into the function to find the output. We love those. Those are easy. The next one, they give you the function and they give you the output. Use the input, right? Um, that is, um, or find the input rather. So set the function equal to the output to find out what input would give you that. Uh, and that is, like I said, these are two very basic examples, but these will cover the majority, these two techniques will cover the majority of function questions. Not too bad, right? So with function questions, it's really important to remember that there are only three components. There's the input, there's the function, and there's the output. Yes, there are different ways of presenting the question to you, but every single function question rests upon that symbol concept. So we've seen a few, we saw a few examples, we're gonna do more in a few weeks, um, but uh, always ask yourself, which of these three components are they giving me, and how do I work with those? All right, good luck. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. Bye.